All right, so I got to um, refilm the intro to this because I used a clip from a movie, and in order for me to get the full ad revenue, I can't use that clip. So the clip I was using is, um, I don't know, you ever seen that movie Kingdom of Heaven? It's about the Crusades in Jerusalem. Anyway, there's this part, best part of the whole movie, when King Baldwin is playing chess. And he's explaining to the dude, I forget the dude's name, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. It's a great movie, though. Eventually, I'll do a review on it on my other channel. I'll rewatch it and do a review. I'll put the unedited version of this on my Patreon. So, King Baldwin is, is talking to the dude, like the main dude of the movie. And he's basically explaining to him that life is like a game of chess in a lot of ways. That, um... You know, most people, and I go through this in the video, but most people are just being moved around by other people. And when you stand before God, that's not going to work as an excuse. God doesn't want to hear that, oh, I was told by others to do this and that. God doesn't want to hear it. You are in charge of your life. That's what the movie clip is. If you want to see the clip, look up um, King Baldwin Chess, and, and you'll it, the clip will come up. And another thing I want to mention in the video, I'm talking about getting through obstacles. Now, the obstacles I went through are going to be different from you. The, what you know, you know yourself. You know what I'm saying? Whatever obstacle is standing in your path, for some people it's getting sober, some people it's working out, some people it's conquering some sort of fear. The the first major obstacle I conquered in my life was, um, I mean, I guess I was conquering obstacles before this, but the first major one that jumps into my head was when I first did stand-up comedy. I was so afraid. I, you know, so scared to do it. And I sat there watching open mics for like six or eight weeks. Finally, eventually, I just went up and did it. And I actually ate shit. <laughs> I, did, I did not have a good set. Anyways, this, I just had to refilm the intro. If you want to see the unedited version with the movie clip, go on my Patreon. I'm going to throw that up on my Patreon. So, um, everybody... Yeah, well, here, here's the rest of the video. He's making a great point. You got to realize that a lot of people spend their whole lives just getting moved around by others. They they don't even they never even move themselves. They just they get moved by other people. They get moved by other circumstances, but they never once realize that. Hold on. I can move myself, and once you make that realization that I can move myself. That is when life really begins. That's when you really start playing the game of chess. Um, you know, there's there's people out there who are playing chess. There's people out there who are playing checkers. The people who control the world, they're playing chess. A lot of us are playing checkers. But here's one of the things I realized when I was addicted to heroin. One of the one of the main reasons I wanted to get off it so so badly. Now you got to realize that. I loved it. I, it was my only pleasure in life. It was the only thing that brought me happiness. But I knew deep down that I was going against God's will by doing it. And I also knew that God, or whatever you want to call it, but, but you know, I, I don't even know what to call it. God, God is the, the best name I have for it. Like fate, destiny, I don't know what to call it. But I knew that I couldn't move forward in life until... I got off it. I knew that I was at a dead stop, that I was going nowhere, that I was just going around in circles, and that was going to continue until I moved past that. Now, that my whole life, and probably a lot of you out there too, our whole lives are really just a series of obstacles, one after the other. Now, you come up against this obstacle, a wall that seems impossible to get over, under, around. It's, a, it's something that... You don't know how you're going to get over it or around it or through it, but you know that your future is on the other side of that wall. So you have to find a way. And look, all it, it's just a matter of determination. I, you know, the the first major wall that I that I hit in my life was um, when I was living in Vegas, and I had come to the realization maybe a couple of months earlier that. I, I was, that working these regular jobs wasn't working for me. That was my comfort zone. 
It wasn't working for me. It didn't matter how hard I worked or how much I sacrificed. It wasn't working for me. It wasn't getting me where I wanted to be. It was a harsh realization that I did not want to face. I wanted people get in my comments. Why don't you just get a job? Like, do you, it, it, it disgusts me. It annoys me because do, do you re realize that that was all I ever wanted? That was all I ever wanted. But I came to the realization that it wasn't working for me. God had a different plan. It wasn't what I, you know, and I'm not saying I'm some great per person with this great destiny. I, I just, it, deep down in my heart, beyond what anyone could tell me, I knew deep down it just wasn't going to work for me. It was my comfort zone. It was easy. Do you think it was hard for me? Like, to go do a job that I didn't mind doing, construction, and, you know, putting in my, my work. I like doing hard labor. I like doing construction. These are things I don't mind. I would be working out after work. That's I, I like the workout. I, I like physical work. And But what I realized after losing I don't know how many jobs due to really no fault of my own, if it was my fault, I could fix it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like it's not like I wasn't looking for a way. Like, what am I doing wrong here? Let me fix this. There was nothing I could do. Like, just things happening. Like, the contractor running out of work or some. You know, things happening that that were beyond my control. It, you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. I made some bad decisions, but I didn't repeat them. You know what I mean? And it still kept happening. I couldn't figure it out. Eventually, I realized that. I'm going to have to find another way to make a living. The other thing I was realizing was I can't rely on I, I can't rely on this economy anyway. I need to find a way to do it on my own. But so the first major obst obstacle that stood in my way was when I was living in Vegas, brokest I ever been. I had pawned everything. I had no money. I was showing up at the labor pool at five in the morning, first one there. This was when the economy was so bad. It was around like 2009. Um, and I couldn't get any work. I was showing up at 5 in the morning. I did that for a week straight. Showed up at 5 a.m., first one there. I couldn't get no work because throughout the entire day, only two or three people would get sent out, and those were the people with cars. My, I had lost my truck in Vegas. So I was like, this, this you know, I realized... I'm going to have to do something on the street. And I was thinking to myself, maybe I'll start robbing people or whatever. I've told this story in previous videos, and I came to the realization that if I'm going to do that, if they try to fight me, if they don't want to give up the money, I've got to hurt them. I've got to potentially kill them. And, and I came to the realization as I was out there looking for a target, I came to the realization that are you really, are you really willing to kill an innocent man just just to take his money from him and I, I came no the, the answer was no I'm not gonna do that I I went home and I didn't eat that night and so I started thinking what else can I do and I came up with street performing but I was like but my thing is stand-up comedy I can't play music how do I street perform stand-up comedy I'm too shy to pull a crowd I you know I I can barely bring myself to do it on stage but it's my only real talent so what I had to do was force myself to do something I was very uncomfortable doing, which was going out on the street with a sign. It was either this or beg and panhandle, which I couldn't bring my... As hard as I worked my whole life, I wasn't willing to beg and panhandle. So I went out on the street. I made a little cardboard sign that said something to the effect of best comedian in Las Vegas, um, you know, short set. It, it, it was something like short set $3.00 long set five dollars some, something like that it wasn't dollar jokes yet but I went out on, on Las Vegas Boulevard out on the strip with my little cardboard sign folded up I was very embarrassed and afraid to do this so I walked around that whole night and I never got the balls to put the sign out it came it, it ended up midnight 1 a.m. The, the crowd's thinning out and I'm like I missed my opportunity so I had to go home I forget, I, I wasn't eating much for these couple of days because I didn't have much. Um, so, once again, and I had no cigarettes, no nothing. Once again, I went back to the apartment, failed. I, I sitting there with no, no, nothing to eat, nothing to even drink. Vegas is dry. You get thirsty. And the tap water is so disgusting that I had to boil it first and then, you know, because I didn't trust it. So I'd boil the tap water.
and then put it in the refrigerator till it got a little cool so I, I could at least have something to drink. I couldn't even afford a $1 Arizona icy. I had no money. So after two nights of this, the next day I woke up and I said, I'm, I'm not doing that again. I don't care what happens if somebody... I, it, what can be worse than that? So I went out the next night and once again, I couldn't get the balls to, put, to sit there with the sign. I was very afraid. Come 9, 10 o'clock, I was like, all right, it's do or die, bro. Do you want to go back to the apartment and sit there with nothing? I said, nah, bro. So I sat outside of Harris. I'll never forget this moment. Sat out there with a sign. I wanted to hide behind it. I wanted to be invisible. I wanted to evaporate. I didn't want to exist. I was ashamed. I was afraid. I was... It was such a hard thing for me to do. Like, everyone's different, you know what I mean? It, it would literally, it would be easier for me to, to fight a, a, like a lion with, with a machete than, than it would have been for me to do this out there on that strip that night. Everyone's different. You know, that's, I, I can't explain it, but this is like one of my biggest fears is just standing out and looking like an idiot and looking like a fool. That was why it was so hard for me to do stand up in the first place. Actually, that was the first major hurdle I went over was just doing an open mic. I, I, I went to the open mics, I think it was six or eight weeks just watching, and then finally I got the balls to go up. But <clears throat> we're talking about a different obstacle. So the next obstacle was this with the sign. So I'm sitting there on the strip in front of Harris, got my little sign out, very, very embarrassed, very ashamed. I'm just about to, to put it away because people are walking by and looking at me like, you know, like, what is this? What is this moron doing? This you're probably trying to get drug money, this and that. I was just trying to get money for food. And I'm feeling like, not feeling too good about it. Anyways, as I'm sitting there, this black dude comes up. And he's like a thuggish, thuggish black dude from L.A. He had that California accent. Um, you know, like, you know the California accent. If you, if you look up the rapper E-40, he talked like him. And he looked like a gangster type. And I'm like, oh, man, here we go. This guy's going to try to, you know, talk shit to me or start with me or do something. I didn't. I didn't think his intentions were going to be good. Anyways, he comes up. He's like, what's up? I'm like, what's up? He's like, uh, what is that you got there? I'm like, oh, well, basically, I'll tell, like, uh, some of my stand-up comedy jokes for a couple of bucks. And he's like, shit, that's a good idea. He's, I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, I think that's a real brilliant idea. He's like, it takes balls, too. He's like, I've never seen nobody do nothing like that. He's like, I've seen all kinds of street performers, but I ain't never seen that. And he he's hands me three bucks. He's like, tell me tell me some of your stand up. And I go through like the first minute of my set, couple of quick jokes, and he chuckles. And he's oh, on my sign. It said money back if you don't laugh. And he chuckled, just being polite because I was so afraid and nervous. I wasn't you know I wasn't doing it well. Anyways, he lets me keep three bucks and he goes on his way. And I was like, man, that was an angel straight from heaven because without him. I, I wouldn't have been able, you know, I was just about to put the sign and go back to the apartment or figure something. I didn't know. So just him showing up and, and being polite and being friendly towards me changed my whole attitude. It gave me confidence. So after that, other people started stopping. And I tell you what, the next thing I knew within under a half hour I had like 20 bucks which at the time for me was like having a million dollars now I can go get a pack of cigarettes I can go get something to eat I can go get something to drink and I also know that tomorrow I can come out and make money again I don't have to sit there with nothing anymore and you know what I mean so that was a major obstacle for my life now I, I never enjoyed doing the dollar joke thing but I knew uh, deep down on on a deep level that I can't explain I knew it was I was doing it I, I was on the right track that it was going to get me past these anxieties and fears and you know self-doubt and all this shit and it was very good for me I never enjoyed doing it and I got into a lot of little conflicts on the street doing it people see you stand you may as well be standing outside with a target on your chest for, for anyone who feels like acting like an asshole but it taught me to to stand up for myself more solo, like not in high school where I got a hundred friends with me and anybody messes with me, they're messing with all of us. No, this is me alone out on the street. And I learned that, you know, I learned to stand up for myself. I learned to not be afraid. I learned to not be embarrassed. I learned to stand out and do different things. 
and it was a healthy thing for me and for the next I don't know five to seven years of my life I always always knew I had this backup if worse comes to worse I can go out on the street and do my stupid little dollar joke thing and make some money and the more I did it the less I the less afraid I became I realized that I don't have to be afraid of absolute poverty anymore I know now that I can go out on the street and make money in any city, anytime, anywhere. It's not something I enjoy doing, but I don't have to, you know, do anything disgusting or wrong. I can use my God-given gift to make a couple of bucks to get me through the day. So that was when I started moving myself in life. Um, and then, you know, watch my Why I Was Homeless videos if you want to know the full story. Uh, to make a long story short, I ended up um, back to my comfort zone, clinging to some job where everything's safe and sound and, and I've got steady income and this and that, but I realized that, yeah, this is safe, this is easy, this is comfortable, but this is not, this is not going to get me where I want to be. Where I want to be is on a higher level, and, and to get to that higher level, I'm going to have to face more fears, which potentially I may have to be homeless. I may have to go live out on the street. It, it's watch my why I was homeless videos to understand my, my real logic there. But <clears throat> um, what it came down to was I felt that I was being challenged by God. Like God was giving me here, here's your comfort zone again. Do you want, you want that? You, you want to just sit there in comfort and security and do nothing, uh, you know, adventurous or or dangerous, you know what I mean? Or you can throw all that out and, and go face some real challenges, more real challenges. You, you passed the last one, you know what I mean? So you want to keep going. And I decided, yeah, I want to keep going. This, you know, this works for now, this job, but six, eight months from now, I'm going to be real bored. It's nice to eat what I want. It's nice to have a roof over my head. It's nice to be comfortable and secure, but it gets old and it's not going to really get me where I want to be. So, you know, I, I felt that God was offering me uh, a consolation prize if I wanted to back out. And I said, no, I'm going to keep going. So I, I started doing the dollar joke thing out in Times Square while I still had the job just to see, just to see how it worked. And it would actually, it was actually working better than in Vegas, but mainly it, it was working better because I was less afraid and I had more life experience under my belt. So I would go out there in Times Square, less afraid and do my thing and, and make some money. So I realized in New York, I can quit my job and maybe even make as much as I'm making at my job. I was working at the horse track on Belmont. I figured out that if I can make 60 bucks a day, I'll be making the same as I was making on Belmont, which I could do with the dollar joke thing. Just it, it it took a lot of effort, but what I realized eventually was it, it's, you know, it, it there's no safety and secure, security when you're doing things like that. One day you're going to make five bucks, the next day you're going to make 120. You just don't know. So I was real broke from then on until I started doing the, the, the bad portrait thing. And I got to say, it was so, once I started doing the bad portrait thing, it's funny, it wasn't working that good at first. You know why? Because I still had the dollar joke thing out. I was like, I'm going to do both. And what happened was because that dollar joke thing was like a safety, it was like a safety blanket. I was, it was, it, I relied on the dollar joke thing for so long that I couldn't let it go. I was like, the portrait thing will be extra, but you know, at least, at least with the dollar joke thing, I know I'm going to make enough money to eat today. So I didn't want to let go of that little security. You know what I'm saying? I don't want this video to be too long. I didn't want to let go of my little safety line, but I had this feeling deep down that it was time to let it go. And that as soon as that, what that sign is distracting from the portrait sign. So I realized you got to let it go, man. You just got to go a drip and put, you know, go all in on the portrait thing as soon as i did that the, i'll never forget it it was it, it was in september in new york city i remember it i was like all right i'm not bringing the dollar joke sign out just the portrait sign let's see what happens i needed money that day i needed it bad i go out there no dollar joke sign just the portrait sign all day i'm killing it all day it, it was like 
the difference was like night and day. As soon as I went all in on the on the portrait thing, I I made more money that day than I had, you know. In there was days with the Dollar Joe thing where I'd go hard all day and night and make like two hundred bucks. But this so this w- was with minimal effort doing the portrait thing. Um, it was within like within a couple of hours I had like sixty seventy bucks, which that was a rarity for me at the time and I was like wow it you know it was like a a a weight was lifted off my chest and I realized like you can start making money now man so um that day I'll never forget it I went and got Chipotle tacos which is something I would always get the burrito because the tacos I'm like you know I'm getting more food with the burritos but I had made so much money that day that I felt rich I was like I'm gonna get the Chipotle tacos later on when I'm back in the Bronx I'll go get the Puerto Rican food across the street. I'll, you know, I can afford to, to eat whatever I want now. So my whole life changed that day. And it was due to, you, uh, you know, once again, just passing these obstacles. It's like you got to realize that you are in control. You do what you want. And you can sit there and stare at that obstacle for the next 10 years. You can pretend it's not, it's not there. A lot of people do that. They don't want to, like... It's just too much for them. Uh, people that are addicted to things, they they don't even want to, you know, face the reality that maybe I should get off this shit and do something else with my life. They don't even think that far. It's too hard. It's too much. Um, I know the feeling, but I also knew deep down I had to, in order to move forward, I, I had to let all that shit go. So you can spend the rest of your life ignoring that obstacle pretending it's not there dancing around it it doesn't you know sooner or later if you want to evolve further in life which is the whole point in life you you got to get through that ob- obstacle some people the obstacle is quitting this comfort and security in the job look it's not easy and i'm not suggesting you do that uh, i'm suggesting that you really take a, a hard look at your life and where you want to go and, and how you're going to get there. Sometimes you got to take big risks. Sometimes you got to you got to risk it all. You know, I was gambling with my life. I I threw out a, a good union job. I my aunt and uncle to this day don't understand it. I can't make them understand it. They they'll never understand it. You know what I mean? They come from a different generation. They come from a different world where you know, they they could uh, obtain the things they want in life with like a regular job. My uncle was a bus mechanic. He just sold his house in Long Island for like half a million dollars. They, you know what I mean? It's they, they come from a different world. In order for me to get the things I want in life, I couldn't go the conventional route. I knew that. And to this day, you know, I it's just for some people it works. You you you, you know you got to know yourself. You don't just don't just throw your job away because. Oh, it worked for him, or and did it work for me? That's debatable. I'm living in a shed right now, <laughs> but I gotta say, as far as inner peace goes, I am I am more at peace than 99% of the population. I'm good, bro, and I also know that God is with me, and that as soon as as soon as I decide to change things, they're gonna change. As far as financially, I'm the type of person where. I'm not in a rush. I'll put it to you that way. But let me tell you this much. Watch me and watch what I become. Uh, uh, okay? So, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, just watch. You, you know you know what I'm saying? Well, watch what I do. So, um, hopefully I got my points across. I don't know if I made my points at all here. So, um, I, I, don't, I don't want the video to just keep going on and on. But, um, everybody... I appreciate every single one is. I love every single one is. Um, you know, thanks for the likes, comments, subscribers. Thanks for the tips, and thanks especially for the Patreon support. If you want to see the videos that I can't put on YouTube, go on my Patreon. Um, it's not that I can't put them on YouTube. It's just that I can do what I want on P- Patreon, and nobody can take that away from me. Uh, you know, YouTube, they can take this away from me any minute, so I need a backup, so I put this stuff, this other stuff on Patreon. Anyways, everybody have a good one, I appreciate every single one of you, I'll see y'all on the next one.